Hello, my name is Bobby Bailey. Today I'm going to be taking you through a demonstration comparing the different versions of Script Runner for Confluence. So that is the server slash data center version and the cloud versions of the add-on. On the left hand side, you can see I've got a data center instance here loaded up and ready with Script Runner installed. And on the right hand side, I have my cloud instance again with Script Runner installed. So let's compare the differences. The first thing to do when comparing the applications is going to be comparing how they look and feel. So if you're familiar with how Script Runner looks and navigates in server or data center, you'll be familiar with the cloud instance too. So if I go to the administrative section in my data center instance, you'll see that on the left-hand side, I have Script Runner installed along with a list of all of the features available and ready for me to use and a browse page to take me through all of the built-in options available divided by the four main components of what Script Runner provides. On the right hand side in my cloud instance, it's very much the same. I go to the administrative section and I can see that Script Runner is installed with all of the features listed here, as well as a browse page. Again, take me through all of the built in options available, um, divided by the four categories that we provide. For core functionality, it's the same across both tools. When I say core functionality, I'm referring to four main features that is the console, jobs, listeners, and custom macros. All of these exist in server and data center and they exist in cloud in the same way. In that way, the console, a script that you can write and execute once over your entire instance, jobs, scheduled scripts that run periodically depending on when you define, listeners, which are event-based scripts that run when events are detected within Confluence, and finally, custom macros, the ability to create macros for your users to use in their Confluence pages. But let's compare two of those. So we're going to compare listeners in server in my data center instance and listeners on my cloud instance. So while we're looking at them listed, they may look slightly different, but the information you see here is the same. So we have the name of the um, listener, we have the events on which that listener fires, and then we have the history of execution available here. Going into a listener is very much the same. I can go into the listener and you can see it looks and is laid out slightly different, but the information is the same. What it's called, the events it's firing on, and the script that executes, the same as it is in data center. Now, some of you will have noticed on the top right hand side, we have a script listener storage space. And this is a good time to talk about the structure of the add-on and how that impacts you using it on cloud compared to server and data center. When you create a script on your data center or server instance, that script is stored and saved in your local Confluence database. And it is then executed on the server or wherever your Confluence application lies, it's, it's executed there. On cloud, your scripts are stored and executed on ours, that's Adaptivist's AWS infrastructure. This is a requirement we have to do building an add-on for cloud. And it does mean that your scripts are stored and executed in a different location, which leads to two technical elements to cloud that aren't apparent on server or data center. One of these is the script storage space. Now, in theory, because we are storing your scripts for you as well as every other customer, there is a limit on how much we can store. However, I say that is in theory because no one ever is impacted by this. Rarely do we have users actually meet this limit. And even if they do, they can raise a support ticket with us and we will increase that limit for them. So no users are currently unable to create scripts in Script Runner, et cetera, because they've run out of storage space. We will work with you to resolve that. Technical limitation is script execution time. If you wanted to create a script on, my data, on a data center instance that ran for three weeks, you could go ahead and do so. It's your instance, it's your infrastructure. You can go and do that. Because we are executing your scripts for you, as well as, again, every other customers, we have to enforce a timeout limit. That timeout limit is 120 seconds or two minutes. So if you go into a brand fresh new script of Confluence and you write a script that lasts for any time longer than that, when it reaches 120 seconds, it will be terminated. Again, we try to work with you to make sure you don't get be impacted by this issue. So if you raise a support ticket and you say, we've got a very specific script that needs to be increased, we can increase that to 240 for very specific examples. We'll also work with you to see if we can um, make your script more efficient, but 
there is um, by default one 120 second limit. As your data is stored on our AWS infrastructure, Adaptivist AWS infrastructure, obviously we have security protocols in place. Um, we treat your data very carefully. We also have data residency available. So if you need your data to be stored in a specific location or in a specific country due to requirements um, for governments, et cetera, then you can raise a ticket with us and we will work with you to get that resolved for you. If you have any concerns about the security and the protocols we follow, we do have more information on our website. The other technical element that is the major difference between cloud and server or data center is the ability to write scripts using specific APIs. So when you build a add-on in your data center or server instance, if you are a company building an add-on, you are able to interact directly with the API of that product. So the Confluence Java API. So you can see here on my scripts and data center, I'm using the component locator to get the page manager, which then has a function get page. And then I can do things like save content entity. This is all using the Confluence Java API. However, when you're building a add-on for cloud, you have to use the REST API. So this is by definition more limited. The REST API is a tool that allows your Confluence instance to interact with external pieces of software or anything that we'll call it. Um, and that translates over into scripts as well. So you can see here in my script, as we've said, I'm using the Confluence Java API. However, in my script on cloud, I'm having to use the REST API. So we're using the content endpoint right now. By definition, REST APIs are going to be more limited than Java APIs. Java APIs are integrations directly into the code base, so the code base of Confluence. REST APIs are public facing interfaces to allow other tools to interact with Confluence. So by definition, they're going to be more limited. Confluence Cloud REST API is in its in of itself very powerful. Um, so what you're probably going to find is for 80% of the scripts out there, you're going to be able to recreate on cloud, no problem. If you have a more specific or more unique example, then you may run into issues, but the amount of endpoints that are available mean that most people will not run into problems for most of their scripts. However, this does mean if you are transitioning from a server to cloud instance with server end of life up and coming, your scripts will not by default work in cloud. You can copy them over, but they will not function. You need to rewrite your scripts so that they work using the REST API as opposed to the Java API. So going through the features now, we'll just now we've covered those technical elements, we'll go through some of the features, the ones that are the same, the ones that are slightly different, and the ones that just are not currently present in the cloud instance, or ones that are unique to the cloud instance. So as mentioned, the console functions exactly the same in cloud and on server um, as a script that you execute once over your entire instance. Built-in scripts, which are obviously derived from the console, there are less on the cloud instance. This is partly in cause of the fact that the cloud version of Script Runner for Confluence is a younger product, so it's less developed than the server version. However, if you do have a built-in script on server or data center that you really want to see in cloud, please let us know so that we can get that feedback and get that onto our backlog. Listeners function the same, jobs function the same. However, they're just, uh, they are spread out in the cloud version. So you've got script jobs and CQL script jobs as opposed to them both being in the same banner. Macros, again, as mentioned, this is a new feature, but we do have the ability to create custom macros in cloud. As this is a new feature, we would love to hear your feedback on this. So if you get to using it and you find you have issues or things that you feel are missing that would be useful, please come and let us know. We're always looking to improve the features. Fragments are present on cloud as they are on server. However, they are significantly less powerful. So obviously, if let's go to enable the hooks on my data center instance, you know if you've been using this that you can hook onto a large number of hooks using the fragments and you can do a load of things such as buttons, panels, etc. Very powerful, very detailed um, functionality on server. Unfortunately, it is more limited on cloud, significantly so. You can pretty much add either a panel or an item and you can add that to the header of a page. 
We do not have the access to Confluence we do on server and data center. Alassian hasn't provided that to us because of the infrastructure problems. Um, so we don't have the unfettered access that we do. So we provide as much as we can, but we are limited in that case. Let's just connect, disable this. CQL functions and search extractors do not exist on cloud. Um, they wouldn't function the same way if they did. So we are again interested in feedback. If you do would like to see something similar to CQL functions or search extractors, please let us know, but they do not currently exist in cloud. REST endpoints do not and will not exist in cloud. Obviously, as we are using the REST API to develop the add-on, we cannot create new endpoints. That would defeat the purpose of a REST API if you could go and create new endpoints using the REST API. So that is not possible in cloud currently. Resources do not exist. And also finally, the script editor is not currently available. This is being investigated. However, it is a significant technical hurdle. So whilst it has been investigated, I wouldn't expect to see it any time in the near future. However, there are features that cloud does have that server or data center does, doesn't. The main one being script variables. So script variables give you the ability to define a variable that you can then go and use in your scripts and give that variable a value. So for example, we've got admin name here with a value. I could go and write 50 different scripts. I could put admin name in those scripts. And when those scripts execute, it would swap out admin name for the value here. This is really useful. And the two main use cases for this is going to be either API tokens, if I'm using scripts in my Confluence Cloud instance to go and hit other APIs and I need to provide a token for authentication, I can store that here. So if that token ever changes, I can just modify this and all of my scripts will update. Another example is going to be web pages. If I'm using my Confluence Cloud script runner scripts to hit Jira, my Jira Cloud instance, and I'm doing lots of things in between those, I'm going to, I, would like, I would say that put your Jira URL here so if it ever does change, you can just modify it here and you don't have to worry about going and checking 50, 60, 70 scripts to make sure that you've covered all of the bases or something gets missed, time consuming. It's just a simple swap here. That covers the majority of the technical differences and the functional differences between the apps. It's really good to talk about migration. Obviously with server end of life coming up, we are going to have a lot of users going from server to cloud. Um, that's just the reality of the situation. And unfortunately, as previously mentioned, the scripts you currently have in your server instance will not work in cloud. There are two things I would say about this. One is it's a really good opportunity for you to evaluate which scripts you're actually using or are actually providing value in your company. You may have 100 scripts, but you may only need to actually take over 20. There's no need to just widely take over every script without necessarily evaluating them to make sure that they're actually still providing value. With the APIs being different and the REST API being technically limited compared to the Java API, some of your scripts, as previously mentioned, will not just copy over even if you change to using REST API. Some of them will not be able to do so because certain endpoints are not available. It's good to remember what we call value parity as opposed to feature parity. So for an example of this, looking at Jira Cloud, there was a function that couldn't be developed for the longest time because the REST endpoints were not available for us to develop that tool. So we just said we can't do it as we have on server or data center, so we're just not going to do it. Recently, we sat back and we decided, well, actually, let's see what value people get from that feature and see if we can recreate it in a different way. And we did, and that feature is called scripted fields and it's now available in, my, in Jira Cloud. It's a good principle to take with scripts as well. If you have a script that doesn't necessarily translate over to cloud with the REST API, it's a good opportunity for you to sit back and say, well, what does this script actually provide us as a company? What value does it give us? And are there any other ways that we could possibly achieve that value? Because it might be that you can take 80% over as are, but 20% don't translate into the REST API, but another 10 of those probably can, if you just think about them in a different way, maybe use a different feature or attack the problem from a different angle. It's a really good idea to keep in mind and, um, and, and to keep present when doing a migration. 
Speaking of migrations, we do have a number of migration resources here. The Migration Hub, obviously, again, migration is a big topic right now. So we've provided a web page to allow you all the information you will need for migrations with Scrutiny Enough Confluence. The documentation for both the server and cloud versions of the applications um, are available there, as well as finally a landing page for scripting as a service. We do provide a service to migrate your scripts for you or translate your scripts for you. Um, so if you are finding that you have either a number of scripts that you just can't translate into REST API, or you're just looking to have that work offloaded, we can do that for you. We obviously have a lot of Alassian experts here and I'm obviously getting a lot of migration questions. So it's going to be a very common topic for us. That is the landing page. This is a paid service, so please do bear that in mind, but it's definitely something that we're happy to help you out with. I hope this demonstration has been useful. Thank you very much for your time and have a great rest of the day.